Hi everyone, Dave Sugden of Evidence at Trial. Let's talk about cross-examination. And we read in treatises and articles all these rules we're supposed to follow when it comes to cross-examination. And what I want to address in this video is, are these rules always good? Do they always have to be followed? Or is some of it not good advice? In fact, is some of the advice terrible? Here's an example. There are these famous Ten Commandments of Cross-Examination that were first published by Irving Younger. And he tells this story that gets repeated over and over in law school to young lawyers, and it's the commandment of asking one question too many. In other words, the idea is you, as the cross-examining attorney, should never ask one question too many, and the example he uses is as follows. It's a case where there was a fight, and in this fight, the defendant allegedly bit the nose off of the plaintiff. And so the prosecutor or the plaintiff, it's a civil case, calls the witness who observed all of this, and this witness attests that the defendant bit the nose of the plaintiff. Now, after that testimony, the defense lawyer gets up to cross-examine this precipient witness. And what this prosecutor, or what's the, what the defense lawyer says is, well, where were you when the fight broke out? And the witness says, well, I was, I was on a field somewhere. Okay, and what were you doing on the field? And according to Mr. Younger, he said, well, I was bird watching. And the witness says, okay, so you're looking at birds. Is that true? And how far away were you from this altercation? Oh, 20, 30 yards. Okay, and, and how did you know that a fight broke out? And he says, well, I, I heard the plaintiff scream. And what Mr. Younger says is, stop there. You have to stop. But what this lawyer did in this story is say, well, if you're bird watching, and if you are looking away and you don't hear, you don't see anything until you hear a scream, how on earth do you know that the defendant bit the plaintiff's nose off? And the witness says, well, because I saw the, def I saw the defendant spit it out. And Mr. Young says, aha, see, one question too many, you should never do that. Why is that bad advice? The reason is, is because let's assume for the moment the lawyer for the defense stops where Mr. Younger said you should have. Unless the opposing counsel is an idiot, that lawyer will get up and say, all right, Mr. Witness or Ms. Witness, you asked a number of questions. But what opposing counsel didn't ask is, how do you know that the defendant bit the nose of the plaintiff? And the witness would say, well, because I saw him spit it out. And what happens? Not only does that fact get in front of the jury, the lawyer for the defense, his, his or her credibility is done. Because the jury thinks, hold it. That whole cross-examination that I thought was effective wasn't effective at all. In fact, this lawyer was withholding facts from me. I, don't, I won't trust that lawyer for the rest of the case. And so if there's a commandment to be followed, it is always make sure you're telling the truth and make sure the truth is getting out. And so if that's information you know, you better address it on your examination and think of other ways you may wanna deal with that witness. Is it bias? Is it something else? But this notion that you should not ask one question, just kind of keep your fingers crossed that your opposing counsel won't elicit bad facts, not good advice. Always be pursuing the truth. So again, when it comes to these commandments, be thoughtful. They're not always going to be followed, and sometimes it's really bad advice. Hope this was helpful. If it was, please download, rate, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and if you want to do a deep dive on our courses, check out evidenceattrial.com. Thanks for watching.